Today I've got a Retina 2C camera here that's come to me for service. Um, it's in very nice condition. In particular, and what concerns me, is that the leatherettes are in very nice condition and they look to be very well stuck down. Now I've got to remove the leatherette from the base plate here in order to be able to disassemble the camera. So my most serious task today is to get that leatherette off. And of course leatherettes have to come off more or less in one piece because I want to get them back on again. So this video is about how I go about doing that. So I'll put this to one side for a minute. I'll show you the tools I use. And the tools I use are scalpels. Now a scalpel is very handy for this trick. A nice sharp blade means you can slide it up underneath the leatherettes, scrape them away like a chisel if you need to. The scalpel I tend to use, the blades, are a number four blade. They fit the number four handle. I've got two different scalpels here. One's a Swan Morton. They're sort of, uh, I suppose, an industry standard. Um, and another one's a no-name brand that I've had for some time. And basically you just need to get one of these handles. Something that fits easily into the hand is the answer. Now the blades themselves, the number four blade, which we can see here, I found that to be a useful shape. Um, that broad blade works well for me. You've got the point for getting it underneath things, but I found that very good. Now when you go to buy your blades, I suggest that you buy Swan Morton. Um, these are non-sterile ones. They're cheaper than paying for the sterile ones. Unless you're going to be digging it into your hand, it's not going to be a problem. And inside the packet, they just look like this. That's a number 22 blade, by the way. The handles were number 4, so it's a number 22 blade. You can also get the same shape of blade cheaper. These are Chinese blades. Same shape, but they've got a problem. The same number, 22. They've got a problem, and the problem with these blades is they're particularly brittle. Now, that probably doesn't make any difference if you're busy carving up people, but it does make a difference when you're using them to get leatherettes off cameras, because there's a certain amount of prying and levering that goes on. And these ones are obviously probably higher carbon content, they're more brittle, they just snap, gets very annoying. So it's worth shelling out the extra, get the Swan Morton ones, they're better. They're less prone to that. They also have a better edge on the blade, um, smoother, the, sh the sharpened edge is smoother, which might not be an advantage when you're carving up people, but it certainly helps when you're trying to get leatherettes off. I bet the serrated edge helps when you're trying to carve people up. So that's the deal with the blades. Number 22 blades, number 4 handle. I find that the best combination for me. So now I've got to get back to dealing with this camera. So I'll put all that to one side. And I've got to get into it from the base. So back in a second. Okay. So getting this leatherette from the base of the camera, we first have to uh, start removing stuff. So we'll start with the easy bit, and we'll start here. Oops, it would help if I didn't knock my screwdrivers over. That was the easy part. Next, we've got to get the leather leatherette patch off the advance lever. And I'm sliding my scalpel in there under that patch 
working my scalpel around when you're holding your scalpel be careful where you're putting your fingers this edge of the blade is very sharp it's easy to get a few extra nicks and cuts from that right that patch came off in one piece nice and neat minimum amount of aluminium on the bottom of it it's always a bonus so these three screws next When you're taking the leatherettes off one of this family of retina cameras, the earlier retina 1B, 2Cs and 3Cs had aluminium alloy, polished alloy body edges. And that means that the vast majority of this leatherette is glued down to the aluminium casting. Later ones had um, chrome trims here, chrome brass trims, and which meant that a lot of the leatherette was stuck to the chrome brass trim. The leatherette comes off easier from the chrome brass trim when it's in good condition. The only time it's easier to get the leatherette off the alloy body, the aluminium body itself, is if there's been some corrosion. If corrosion has got in there, it loosens the leatherettes up for you and you can get them off easily. Now I've got to work my way through this leatherette. So I'll start with my scalpel and I'll try working it in from here. Now this looks to be particularly well stuck. And my chances of getting this off in one piece at the moment don't look particularly high. I'm going to start with a fresh blade on my scalpel. I'll pop that to one side. And make sure I get the, uh, the proper one, not the uh, cheap Chinese replacements. Be careful with these things, they're very sharp. They're designed to make messes of people. Right, back to the task at hand. That leatherette is bonded particularly well, particularly evenly. And uh, no one's disturbed this since 1954 or whenever it was made. So it's um, had a long time to get used to being stuck down. Getting the leatherettes off in one piece is often the trickiest part of the whole job. I've cut that already. That's all right. That'll hide, be hidden. These leatherettes were a uh, plastic coated or plastic impregnated fabric and the fabric base 
was probably cotton, may have been linen. What I'm doing is I'm working the blade through under here. I want to get it back to that edge really, that outside edge. This is probably the worst leatherette I've faced in some time. And not usually as challenging as this. When you start lifting the leather head up, it's important to uh, watch the edge. You don't want to catch it on the handle of your scalpel like this and buckle it up. You need to be able to slide in underneath it. When you strike a part that you just don't seem to be making any progress on, it's always worth just uh, leaving it for a minute, working on another section. You may be able to come at it from a different direction and uh, free it up. It would be great if the metal surface was dead smooth under here. You could put a lot of down pressure on your scalpel, slide it underneath you'd get there, but it's not. There are screw holes um, at this end of the camera we have a brass plate, nickel plated brass plate um, it might be nickel plated steel that one almost inevitably you'll catch your scalpel on the edge of that doesn't do your scalpel any good, makes it hard to uh, scrape your leatherettes off carefully The aluminium body edges are quite soft. Take care not to be digging into them with the uh, scalpel. 
which will certainly cut into them quite well. When I used to work for Kodak many years ago, none of this would have been necessary. If the leatherette didn't look like it was going to come off easily and in one piece, it was just torn off. You'd just scrape it off completely with a scalpel and you'd be straight down to the spare parts bins to get a replacement piece for when you put the camera back together. Now, of course, there are no spare parts, so uh, if you want a leatherette that looks correct and is correct, it's got to be the one that came in on the camera and um, you have to get it off in one piece first. So I've just about got this off the uh, cover plate under here. And that means when I've achieved that, I'll remove the um, rewind button and that cover plate. And that'll mean that I can get in at a better angle here. I won't have this as an obstruction. That's it. Right, so that plate can come off. Don't bend it, don't fold the leatherette sharply, um, it'll crack. Um, that line will show and you'll have to disguise it later. Any cuts will have to disguise later anyway, but uh, the less you have to disguise, the quicker it is when you go to do the repair. Alright, those three screws out, that plate will come out, exposing that advance mechanism. Now I want to remove that rewind button, so back. that didn't take long. Okay, so let's get that button off. and it's spring and it's washer with that out of the way I've got better access for sliding my scalpel down underneath that leatherette at least that's the idea and I can feel the scalpel sliding against the aluminium underneath there which tells me that I'm getting that leatherette off all the leatherette off, not just the very top layer. I don't want to leave a lot of the bay leatherette stuck to the aluminium underneath. Typically I will be able to work from this end of the camera through to about that boss in the middle then I'll turn it around and work back from the other end towards the centre with a bit of luck that'll all go well the only reason this leatherette is being a particular nuisance is that it's in very good condition as is the whole camera and it hasn't had the advantage of a little bit of corrosion to help break that glue between the leatherette and the body and so it's stuck really really well
it's often worth using a new scalpel blade when you do a particularly difficult job like this because an old scalpel blade the edge will be a bit chipped and rough and uh, as a result it won't slide smoothly over the aluminium body underneath um, and if it jumps, catches and jumps, you're likely to end up sticking the blade through the letterette so you want things to run as smoothly as possible well that ran particularly well another thing to be aware of is that aluminium boss in the middle it's, it is aluminium and it's black anodized um, it will show scratches if you scrape up and down that with your scalpel in the process of getting the leatherettes off there'll be bright scratches on there they can be disguised with um, a marker pen later if necessary but uh, better if you don't have to well actually we've just about got round that boss all from one end that's quite good Yeah, I'll just cut through that slightly there to be careful if you do get a cut in the leatherette it means that the leatherette at that point is a little bit weaker and um, more easily damaged so if you get a little, you've made a little nick in it you've got to be a little bit extra careful to, to get it all off smoothly that looks quite good Oops, just starting to get cramped in my hand there. Well, this is going quite smoothly now. Right, we're approaching this end. Now this tripod socket, that's chrome plated brass the glue typically doesn't stick as well to that chrome plating so it should be a bit easier down here Getting the right angle of attack is the hard part. That's all but done now. That was it. That's it. So that's our leatherette all off in one piece. Um, that'll go back on absolutely perfect there's a tiny nick and at, at this point 
There was another one on an edge somewhere, but I can't see it now. They'll disappear. Once it's glued back down, they'll be gone. If there'd been bigger cracks or splits, I'd have had to fill them with a uh, wax crayon. But that one's come off perfectly, so we won't need to. Well, that's the hard part of this particular job done. Now all I've got to do is take the camera apart.